What is going on everybody? Welcome to another gameplay video today. Uh, we're gonna continue the jank train. So uh, if you didn't watch the last two episodes of the gameplay stuff, uh, it was all Outlaws Merriment. Uh, turned out to be a really sweet deck, uh, one that I'm probably gonna continue playing with because it was very, very fun. Uh, this time I thought, you know, let's let's go big. Go big or go home, right? So we're we're doing Dragons and Mirror March. We're going to try and make this happen. So this is a list that I pulled from Aetherhub. This is not necessarily one that I culminated myself. I did kind of dig through a few, and this was the best that I could find. Uh, I really do like this as a starting point, but I definitely understand that this is jank. Uh, just go into an understanding that. So uh, to quickly go through the deck, we have Paradise Druid as a four of. Pretty obvious ramper, it also provides us with a blocker early game. Uh, Scorching Dragonfire as a 2 of, just a way to deal with creatures uh, or planeswalkers, which is really, really nice. Uh, we see a lot of planeswalkers around right now, Teferi, Narset, uh, even things like Sarkon, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, and so being able to deal with those at instant speed f with, uh, with something like this is great. So definitely happy to have that. Uh, three Gift of Paradise, again, a way to keep us in the game in the early part of this, uh, the early aggro decks. Uh, but also ramp us into our mirror marches, our big dragons, that kind of stuff. So very exciting there. Uh, opportunistic dragon. Uh, I don't, I've never played with this card very, very much, but, uh, it's, it's really nice because it, it's an early game flying evasive threat, but also, you know, gets to do some cool stuff. Uh, so pretty excited to kind of play around with this. Storm's Wrath. Uh, is a really, really good way, again, to clear the board, keep us in the game against those early kind of creature-focused decks, uh, or even Planeswalker-focused decks, and then be able to kind of swing in with a bunch of dragons after the fact. So a lot of powerhouse stuff here. Uh, Hellkite Whelp. Uh, interesting card here. Uh, doesn't really look all that good, but... Uh, it is quite good with Mirror March. If you can get a bunch of these out, uh, it essentially becomes like a board wipe for your opponent. So it can be very, very good. Uh, Rapacious Dragon, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Another way to, to kind of ramp us into the Mirror March and get us a lot of mana with those treasure tokens. You can also get tons and tons of them if you've already got a Mirror March out. So there's a lot of plus there. Uh, uh, Scargon Hellkite, uh, a really, really powerful dragon in my opinion. Uh, you, you get to obviously, uh, deal some damage if you would like to, uh, and then all that kind of stuff, but, uh, getting a lot of these out would be really, really sweet as well. You give them all, well, they get all haste, but you get to pump them up with the riot trigger, which is sweet. Uh, Sarkon, the masterless, uh, obviously works really, really well with all these dragons and pumps out dragons itself. Uh, Return of the Wild Speaker is a really good way to draw some more cards or pump up a lot of your board if you need to. Uh, we'll get to Mirror March in a second. Uh, the Maw of Flames is just insanely good. Uh, it just deals so much damage to basically everything, so it's a really good way to kind of control the board, deal a lot of damage really, really quickly. Uh, Beanstalk Giant, more in there for the Fertile Footstep side, uh, definitely in there to, to help ramp you, but it does supply a very, very strong uh, on-the-ground presence as well, so if you need it for that, it's certainly there. Uh, Mirror March is kind of like, hey, let's win as best we can. Uh, that's kind of what Mirror March does. We saw the Mirror March deck, uh, the uh, Teamer version of a Mirror March deck. We played that, uh, wow, quite a while back, actually. Uh, a few months back, and it was actually surprisingly good, uh, but it is high variance. Obviously, you don't know if you're going to get a lot of uh, token copies or not. Uh, hopefully, you do, and then you get, you know, tons of value, but if you don't, obviously, that kind of sucks. So, we'll see how this plays out. It's a very high variance card, but it is quite good. Uh, we do run both castles, one of Castle Embreath, and then two Castle Garenbrig. Uh, and then, of course, for Stomping Ground, Stomping Ground, and then for Temple of Abandon, we have the three Fabled Passage as well. So, we are going to test this deck out. It's going to be a silly one. I uh, didn't name it. That's okay. So, uh, it is going to be a very, very fun deck, in my opinion. Uh, and we will see how it performs. <clears throat> uh, also, just want to mention, we are in the start of the new month, with, which does mean we've got new Patreon rewards. Those are cycling down below. If you'd like to pick those up, uh, patreon.com slash it resolves is the way you can do that. Uh, okay. It's actually a very keepable hand, in my opinion. So we don't have any big, you know, stompy stuff. We've got the early game to ramp us, and then we've got Storm's Wrath, so I'm in. Okay. <coughs> 
I'm also going to be learning this deck quite a bit as we go through. I've not uh, yet uh, played any games with this, so this is certainly going to be a new uh, experience for me. Bone Crusher, sure, makes sense. I think here we're just going to do this. Why would it... Okay, well, that's fine. I didn't really want to tap the Paradise Druid, but I guess this works just the same, so that's fine. Uh, no blocks. So here we do get to Mirror March. Uh, let's get this down as quickly as possible. Next turn we can Storm's Wrath, clear the board. Uh, we'll leave this up as a blocker. And I will just go ahead and block here. Definitely taking a lot here. Um, down to three. Okay, enters the battlefield, choose target not target human or artifact and opponent controls. Hmm, nope. Um, again, still learning, sorry guys. For as long as opportunist remains on the battlefield, gain control of that permanent. Okay, um, so here, get rid of everything oh duh we just lose anyway all right well that was a very quick game um <laughs> unfortunately they just had the tools there but uh i guess we could have played opportunistic dragon but i don't really think i don't think that would have gotten us out of it so uh we will continue testing this and see what we can do uh this is i i, I have high hopes for this i kind of want this to be just kind of a fun deck. Not necessarily a good deck. Uh, I'm not expecting that, but I do think it'll be kind of fun, so uh, we will see. Hopefully we get a better chance to show what it can do. Uh, what do we have? Yeah, I think we keep this. This is actually fairly solid. Uh, we can start off with Fabled Passage. We'll go ahead and get our second red here for the upcoming Storm's Wrath that we expect to play. I wonder what they are doing. Whoops. Blue white. Okay, looks like Azorius control. In that case, I'm just going to swing in here. Um, <laughs> Take the damage when you can against this Azorius control deck, uh, and that certainly was an opportunity to do so. So, uh, And here again, I think we're just going to do this, and then we'll pass. Um, kind of taking it slow against this deck. Um, I know that's not amazing, uh, but Storm's Wrath isn't necessarily going to be the most impactful card in the world uh, until, at the very least, they get something down on the field so let's try and get this down my expectation is this does not resolve yep okay another birth of Miletus okay this is definitely going to be a tricky game the Azorius control deck in general is always just kind of rough Let's do this. And I'm going to pass here. I kind of want them to bounce the Hellkite Whelps so then I can Scorching Dragonfire on uh, onto Fairy here. <clears throat> Banishing Light. 
Interesting. Definitely don't need another land. We really can't do too much here. Um, kind of in a bad spot. We haven't gotten very many good draws either. That certainly does not help. Interesting that they're only ticking up on that, but I guess that makes sense. Here we can double Storm's Wrath, which I kind of think is the, the play. Just reset the board here. We just need like a good draw. That is not a good draw, but we will play it. <coughs> Excuse me. That's fine. Seemingly, we can only draw lands, so we'll pass. Not a very exciting game, guys. I apologize. Hopefully, we can get there with something, though. I would love, like, a good, a well-timed mirror march would be pretty nice. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, we pass. So many dead cards right now. Um, certainly not the best opportunity here. Oh, come on. Seriously? That's terrible. Yeah. This is very unfortunate. Uh, yeah, and now they're going to be able to, to pump out some tokens, which is certainly not good for us. Like, there's no way that resolves, right? There's no way this resolves. Okay, just kidding. I mean, they're just going to bounce it. But, you know. Or they've got, like, a Shatter. Or a Banishing Light. That works, too. Man. The slow ping of 1-1s one is... Oh, my goodness. How have we drawn lands and return of the wild speaker like this entire time? I'm going to give it haste here. Oh my goodness. Yep. <clears throat> At least we get to draw a card. All right. 
that's very bad for us with all three of these Return of the Wild Speakers in our hand. But... Elspeth conquers death, naturally. Okay, well. Hmm. I really don't want to play the opportunistic dragon into the Elspeth Conqueror's death solely because they've got like dream trawlers in the graveyard, or at least one, uh, which is real bad for us. So we will see what we can do. Absorb. Okay. Okay, let's thin out our deck as much as possible because this is ridiculous that we're just drawing. Not amazing stuff here. <laughs> Hmm. Like, it's just bad to play that, I think. They're so well set up against us, unfortunately. We just don't have much we can really do. I'm okay taking some damage here, that's fine. Let's play this here. We can't just sit around and do nothing. We will attack Narset. Wow, seriously. That is so bad. Okay, yeah. I think they've pretty well locked us out at this point. With that Elspeth Conqueror's death plus Absorb in hand, we're, we're in for quite a battle here. Um. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and play this, expecting them to either absorb or Elspeth conquers death, but we need to we need to keep doing something here so they they continuously play stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> if only Teferi had an ultimate. A true ultimate, I should say. Goodness. Okay, yeah. We're just not getting anywhere, because even if we do stick something, they've got the Elspeth Conqueror's death, right? Like, I 
Also, I don't think there was necessarily a misplay this game that caused this, by the way. I I try to look back and make sure that, like, because I misplay a lot. That, that's very, very evident if you've watched any of our videos. Um, but I don't think there was necessarily a big misplay. I just think we're not. I mean, these are all just dead cards against this deck. Um, so we, we're literally just not getting anything. So I think I'm going to go ahead and concede here. This is just a grind that's going to end in us losing because even they may not have a counter. They've got Bounce Hunt to Fairy. They've got Elspeth Conquers Death. Like they, they've got it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and concede and we'll, we'll jump into game three. So far, not a great showing from this deck, but we will, we will continue trying for at least our two day period and see uh, how we can do. Yeah, I'll keep that. J Splash. Interesting. Okay. Our goal, get Mirror March out. Uh, as soon as possible. So next turn we're going to Beanstalk Giant and then hopefully be able to Mirror March the following turn. I believe that's correct, right? One, two, yeah. No, I do not want them to be able to target Paradise Druid with anything. So one, two, three, four, five, six, which does let us get Mirror March, and then it's just a matter of we need powerful creatures, which we do already have the Beanstalk Giant, which helps. Uh, the reason I didn't want to tap this, if they have got any removal spell, that obviously throws a pretty big wrench in our plan by about a turn. I'd rather get that down as soon as possible because they're against a mirror march. They may not have much uh, to to actually do. We'll we'll certainly see, but so here I'm okay with them you know, dealing with the Paradise Druid because now we've got a uh, rapa rapacious dragon. Uh, <clears throat> and then of course, Beanstalk Giant to follow. If we get any amount of, uh, so the way Mirror March works is if we get multiple dragons with this, we obviously get two treasures for, excuse me, for each one, uh, which just means we could, um, Technically, like, Beanstalk Giant do some crazy stuff right away. Um, it depends, obviously, but we'll see. It's a pretty interesting draw. Not very helpful. All right. Hopefully we get a lot of mirror marches. The likelihood is that we don't, but that's okay. Yeah, okay. But now, so now we've got two extra land, essentially. Uh, one shot deals, but we've got two more. Uh, so we can rapacious dragon and then have a better shot at beanstalk gianting the same turn, or we can just beanstalk giant will we will evaluate as we go. <sighs> Obviously, the more land we have, the better shape we're going to be in with this, so... Oh, that's good. Okay, so we use five here if we would like. We get four left, which means we need a good bit there. Alternatively, we can Storm's Wrath, which doesn't really help us that much. I think I'm going to drag in here. Ooh. 
we're kind of hoping to get lucky, but I'd like to have more flyers out. They do have the Gilded Goose, which is fine, but if I get like a lot of flyers, for instance, they're going to have to block. <laughs> and there is the potential. This is a bit of a greedy play, but it, there is the potential we could get just tons of... <laughs> of course we don't. Um, okay, so we can Beanstalk Giant as well. Let's go for it. Okay, that I will happily take. Okay, so that's a good bit of damage coming through. <laughs> Certainly they can block one of these, uh, and that's fine. It's not ideal because they can just kind of block one, but they're still going to take a, a chunk of damage here. <laughs> And now we do have, you know, a decent threat on board. Uh, we also scried a land to the bottom, so there's the hope that we have something good on top. Uh, Return of the Wild Speaker would also be quite good. The cool thing about Mirror March is you never know if, like, the turn that you play, like, even just a Paradise Druid could, technically could, mean that you win the game. Because it's weird, like, you could get... 20 of them or you could get none of them uh or excuse me obviously you're gonna get one but you know what i'm saying like there's always that potential so it's actually really really exciting to see you know what you can actually do corvold that's certainly a good card What do we need? Really just anything that... Any big dumb creature would be awesome. That a beanstalk giant would be good. That's not good. The problem is there's not much of a point in doing this. They just get to do this sacrifice thing, draw more cards, that kind of thing. Um, we can Storm's Wrath, but like that, uh, that honestly hurts us more than it hurts them. With this on the field and the witch's oven, we're just in not great shape. <laughs> and they, of course, have like a million cards, so... <laughs> Under City's Embrace. That's an interesting card. Well, Guys, I think we lost again. I'll be honest. They've just got so many Cauldron Familiar activations. <laughs> we could have, I guess, baited a block last turn by swinging in with one of these, but... Ugh.
Hmm. We got one more turn, essentially. Maybe, I should say. <laughs> Even that's a bit of a stretch, so we'll certainly see. Corvold Man just goes so hard. We do not have a way at all to deal with Corvold. And if they deal with this, we're just dead. <laughs> yep, they got us. I'll let them swing in, let them do their thing. Um, but they definitely got us. Unless they're going to prolong this, in which case I'm not going to. Okay, you got it. All right, well, 0-3 with this uh, Gruel Dragons deck. Uh, I do think this is a fun deck. We'll we'll give it another day, and we'll see if we can uh, hopefully get something out of it. I think it's, it's a silly deck, right? Like, it's not meant to be amazing. It's a bit of a jank deck, so to be expected a little bit, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. I think it'll be fun. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. Uh, if you did, please make sure, of course, to leave a like or a comment. Uh, make sure to subscribe. We certainly do appreciate it. Any and all help is really greatly appreciated. So thank you guys so much again, and uh, I'll see you in the next gameplay video.